All right, with me next is David O'Brien from UBS. UBS is uh, one of the largest global Swiss banks founded in 1862. And David is part of the workforce management team in Switzerland that focuses on group technology recruitment. And he's here with us today to share his experience with HackerRank and how he's dealing with this crazy remote world. So David, let's start by hearing a little bit about yourself and what this group technology group does. So uh, yeah, part of the workforce management team for group technology for UBS. Um, and one of the key functions that we have is obviously bringing engineering um, skills, bringing engineering talent into the organization. Um, we're doing that across the globe. We have major centers in, in, in Asia, particularly in India. Um, in, in Europe, we work in Poland, in Switzerland, in the UK, and obviously with centers in, in the USA. So that's the primary role we have is ensuring that we're getting the right people into group technology for UBS. Now, David, you were telling me that um, uh, you've had a big um, shift in strategy for your um, uh, technology group um, over the last few years. Um, can you share with the audience a little bit about um, how the um, strategy of hires have changed? Yeah, I think um, like many organizations, probably 10, 15 years ago, the, the kind of the big strategy at that time was to outsource as much as possible. Um, UBS took the decision, and in particular, uh, our CIO, Mike Dargan, took the decision with that when he came on board that he wanted to build up a technology culture within group technology. So to create a culture, he, he felt that you needed to have, ensure that the majority of people who were working in your team actually worked for the organization. So one of the driving kind of principles that Mike introduced to everybody was, let's get all of the kind of technology skills, let's get all of that talent and bring it back in-house to make those people part of the UBS team, part of group technology, to kind of build our culture from there. So that's, that's kind of been a major shift for us, a major focus. So David, starting with a, a mandate of bringing uh, a lot of the tech talent inside of UBS must have been a tall order for you in the role of workforce management. Uh, how did you tackle that big task ahead? They, it was indeed a big task and, and the, the challenge that we had was simply the volume that we had, you know, so to actually make sure we were bringing the right talent into the organization, the talent that we, we, we were sure it was the right culture fit for the organization. Um, and we needed to kind of build a process that was ensuring that we were assessing skills right and bringing the right skills into the organization, making sure we had a kind of, I suppose, a, a solid recruitment process, screening process, assessment and evaluation. Absolutely. And, and um, what we heard earlier in this uh, uh, Hacker Rank main event was all the discussion around um, assessing the right skills for the job. Talk to us a little bit about what kind of roles that um, you were looking to fill and how your team um, uh, standardized on the skills that you needed to um, hire for around the globe. Yeah, I mean, in, in a kind of a nutshell, the skills we're looking for are engineering skills. So um, software engineers, quality assurance engineers. So that, that's probably, that covers about 80% in a nutshell of what we wanted to or what we needed to hire for. So we, we focused, uh, UBS is primarily driven around the technology on Java. So a big piece of what we were doing there was around back-end Java. Um, and, and that's where we started. That was a kind of the first test that we started working on with HackerRank to kind of do some, you know, build the test out, do some internal benchmarking, do some validation. Um, and so that was the starting point for us. And so as you um, uh, started to get your um, uh your processes in place to hire these Java developers. What were some of the big aha moments for you as you started to get um, uh, up to speed on bringing the uh, testing of the skills and how has your mentality um, uh, evolved uh, as you got uh, your teams uh, built? Yeah, I would say that so originally when we kind of first started with Hacker Rank. And um, it was very academic and it was very kind of the presentation for us and the perception that we had was that we were shifting a kind of paper driven process and we were shifting it to a kind of a digital platform. And I think the aha moment came once we had the initial tests built, we realized that it, it wasn't just shifting a paper test and putting it onto a, a computer. We were really shifting the mindset 
and we were improving the candidate experience and we were improving the quality of what we could do with candidates, especially in the cold screen aspect. And, and overall, the kind of, I think the slow realization, I don't think it was such a, an aha moment, but the realization that actually by using the platform, by using HackerRank, we we're actually improving the image, the tech image of UBS. And again, we're, we're a bank, we're a Swiss bank, but we were coming from group technology and we wanted to attract attract engineering skills into the organization so, so that was for me maybe the, the biggest shift from how we started and to where we are today and uh, do you as you do your recruiting across these different geographies um, are you comparing um, how your skills look um, in those major parts of the world yeah absolutely i mean one of the the guiding principles that i was given when we launched um, you know, the, the program to bring Hacker Rank in was that we wanted to have a standardized approach to our talent. We wanted that red line, whether you're based in Nashville, New York, you're in Krakow, in Poland, or you're in India, that if you have completed one of our kind of hiring tests, one of our cold screen evaluations, that we could tell and we could compare talent in all of those locations. So that, that's, that's critical to what we do. And it's something that we constantly, so we, we have the same tests for each location. So if you're coming in as a back-end Java developer again, then we would expect to be able to compare the skill set in one market with the skill set in another market. So David, once the world went remote and you still had to bring on uh, hiring lots of uh, software developers, um, how did that affect your process and how did you keep your uh, workforce group going? Uh, well, um, one of the challenges that we, we had at the time was that we had started to use a screen, obviously, to bring in our candidates in, and we, we wanted to move a little bit faster into the interview process. We were immediately, you know, again, from the time the COVID situation broke out, suddenly we were all scrambling to find ways of doing things that we didn't have to bring people into the office. So it, in a sense, it, it accelerated the thinking around, okay, how do we move into hacker rank interview? Um, and that's what, that's what we've, we've kind of moved along in the last few months. Um, to the point now that it's part of our official process and um, we have had many pilots and testing over the last months and, and in, in, in actually next week it, it becomes officially part of our recruitment process to go into hacker rank interview so we'll have the full kind of full end-to-end -end process from interview to screen and, and i think that's that's kind of accelerated the thinking accelerated the way we behave and it's made it a little bit easier for me in, in terms of rolling this out through the uh, organization that makes sense. Now, you also mentioned to me that you're looking at using HackerRank for contingent hiring. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, again, if we go back to, you know, the kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of the conversation, that one of the aspects that the principles, the guiding principles that we had was that we wanted to have a global standard of engineering talent coming into group technology. In the same vein, we, we have a huge workforce, of actually contingent workforce. So what we wanted to do was make sure that the contingent workforce were also then tested to the same standards, that we had the same measurement of our contingent workforce. And we, we actually used exactly the same tests for our internals and for our contingents. So, and that's something completely new for us in the last two months. That's kind of really kept me busy rolling this out then to our, our, our uh, ITO partners. And there are lots of people um, uh, that are uh, tuned in today that are um, not as far along as you are in your process of um, uh, standardizing and automating their end, end hiring process, um, leveraging technology. What words of advice would you give them if you were uh, uh, advising them on what to watch out for when they're starting out? Um, I think the lessons learned that we've taken away, so uh, maybe that, that's the, the best advice I can give, it's just our own experience. I think that if I could go back maybe to the beginning of this process, I simply would have kind of just reimagined the entire process rather than thinking that, again, that we're just plugging in a traditional process, the paper process into our standard recruitment, actually to kind of step back, look at the capabilities that the platform, the technology can offer us, and then to kind of then start to rebuild and redefine the recruitment process. So, so very much kind of on a, uh, on that level, I would go back, I'd, I'd kind of use the lessons learned we had, and I would just start from kind of a free thinking process of look at the capabilities and see what we can deliver there. That's great. And, and uh, 
I think too, um, uh, one of the stories that you shared with me earlier um, about uh, bringing in the interview process, there are um, aspects in the um, product that surprised you uh, that the hiring managers were excited about. And do you remember that story? You want to share that one? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, um, part of my role at the moment with the uh, kind of the interview section in particular, it, it's kind of introducing it across the organization. You know, we're, we're a big organization and sometimes getting the message out. So I go on a lot of management team meetings. I go on a lot of kind of community forums and I do the presentation of, of code there. Generally, I get a lot of, you know, most of the presentations I do, people find, okay, maybe for interview, uh, or sorry, for, for a screen, it was a little bit static. But as soon as I got into the capabilities on interview, then the chatter started. People were asking, when can we have this? There was a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz that it surprised me, you know, because again, I'm, I'm not a technologist, you know, this is the, my, my bread and butter is bringing in and implementing these aspects into workforce. But for the technologists, they were really, you know, just kind of pinging me on the side saying, this is really cool. When can we use it? So, so the, it's just the feature of, you know, that they, they have a whiteboard, they have a diagram, they have coding, they can pick and choose what they want to do. And, and I think they, it resonated with the hiring managers that, then they can really sit together with their in, with their candidates over an interview and actually get down to the nuts and bolts, get into engineering and get into the culture of what we do. That's great. Well, David, I really appreciate you sharing your perspective with everybody here at the HackerRank main event. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Really appreciate it.